Western countries fear that Russia is preparing for a new assault on Ukraine. While Moscow denies any plans for an attack, it has signaled unspecified military action unless the West agrees to its demands on security guarantees. Kyiv has asked Western countries for arms to help it protect itself. On a visit to Kyiv, a bipartisan group of U.S. senators has promised solidarity and weapons to Ukraine. We will impose crippling economic sanctions, but more important, we will give the people of Ukraine the arms, lethal arms, they need to defend their lives and livelihoods. And so our message is there will be consequences if he chooses uh, to violate uh, the, the sanctity of this democracy. Britain has also begun supplying anti-tank weapons to Ukraine that will help defend itself from a potential invasion. Canada has also deployed a small contingent of special forces operators to Ukraine. In the event of a full-scale invasion, the unit has also been tasked with helping to develop evacuation plans for Canadian diplomatic personnel. Meanwhile, German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock on her first visit to Ukraine, met with President Volodymyr Zelensky. Baerbock said she hoped tensions with Russia could be solved by diplomacy. Meanwhile, Russian military forces and hardware have arrived in Belarus to stage joint maneuvers next month. The drills will be dubbed Determination of the Union 2022. Close Russian ally Belarus borders Ukraine. According to the Belarusian leader, the drills should focus on a scenario when the military is forced to resist forces coming from the West. Russian soldiers also took part in a tactical exercise in the Rostov region near the Ukrainian border. Troops conducted exercise on engineering exploration, fortification and mining. Joining us live from Moscow for more on this is Stuart Smith. Thank you for your time, Stuart, and good to see you. Critics argue that Moscow is trying to coerce Western nations unless they agree to their demands. Is that what has been stoking the animosity between Russia and U.S. and NATO? And what is the situation in Moscow? Tell us more about the Russian military hardware arriving in Belarus. Yeah, so as things stand, the situation diplomatically between Russia, the West, NATO and the United States uh, is that Russia is waiting for a written response to Russia's security demands, which it discussed with NATO, with the United States and with the OSCE last week. Those negotiations did not result in any kind of breakthrough. But before taking any further steps, Russia would like the US to respond in writing to its proposals and then come up with a uh, plan to move forward. Russia says, depending on what the US says in response to these proposals, that will dictate what happens next. It will be a decision made in conjunction with the President, Russian, um, Vladimir Putin, as well as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Ministry of Defense, depending on what the uh, army believes is possible. That is all uh, being investigated under the background, as you say, of military drills. And you've mentioned two there, but there's a third going on right now in the Leningrad region, northwest Russia, with around 2,000 troops, the military says, uh, t undertaking live fire exercises. The Belarusian drill that you mentioned, the president there, Alexander Lukashenko, he justifies that, saying that NATO militaries, Poland, Lithuania, uh, are building up troops, thousands of troops, near the border with Belarus, and this would be a sign that Belarus uh, is not going to be intimidated. The exercises would happen in southwest Belarus, which is near the border border with both Ukraine and Poland, notably Poland, a NATO member state, Ukraine not, but indeed weapons and uh, and now we hear Canadian special forces have been deployed to the country to provide assistance. Stuart, what is or will be the impact of countries like Britain supplying weapons and Canada deploying special forces to Ukraine? 
Yeah, well, the UK Defence Minister, Ben Wallace, who uh, told Parliament about the plans to send uh, weapons to Ukraine, he says they are purely defensive. He says this support is for short-range and clearly defensive weapons capabilities. They are not strategic weapons and pose no threat to Russia. They are anti-tank uh, defences, which is what the UK has sent. And so Ben Wallace, the Defence Minister there, making the point that the UK is not arming Ukraine with weapons to, for example, invade Russia, as Russia has claimed is a possibility, or indeed to try to take back its eastern region by force. These are purely defensive capabilities, and they are being delivered uh, and have been being delivered over the past few days. That's in comparison. Uh, well, I should add, uh, first of all, the United States has also already been sending equipment and uh, naval equipment, uh, and lots of money, ammunition to Ukraine to try and bolster its defenses. NATO is not, uh, well, Ukraine is not part of the NATO military alliance, but many Western nations are willing to give uh, support in the form of money and weapons. That's different, though, to Germany, and this will be something that the Foreign Minister uh, Alenena Baerbock will be speaking about in Kiev. Germany is not sending weapons to Kiev, noting that it did not want to uh, enhance the risk uh, of war. Uh, but one thing Germany does say it wants is serious dialogue and also a discussion between Ukraine, Russia, Germany and France in the so-called Normandy format about how to resolve this conflict without violence.